three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. All right, welcome to Roots of Reality. I'm your host, Ben Bauman, and today I'm going to be talking about the history of vestigiality. So vestigial parts are essentially remnants of our evolutionary past. They exist in all animals and are represented as parts of our bodies that no longer serve a purpose or are not as useful to us as they once were in our ancestors millions of years ago. However, despite these vestigial parts existing and you and I, there are still millions of people around the world today who deny the concept of evolution in favor of a religious-based creationism. And for many, this is because people often are afraid of concepts like evolution and the potential for these concepts to contradict their belief in God and hinder their faith. Also, by human nature, we as people also just like to feel special. So the idea that you know we descend from various types of creatures over millions of years of evolution doesn't sound quite as cool as if, you know, God specifically designed you and you just appeared one day on Earth. However, scientifically, though, as a species, our existence is much more complex than religious creationist beliefs. In fact, evidence of evolution can be found on many different places in our body, For instance, every human being today has what is known as a tailbone. Now, why is it called a tailbone? Well, it's because millions of years ago, our non-human primate ancestors had tails for balance. However, when our ancestors evolved to be bipedal creatures capable of walking on two legs, the need for tails was no longer necessary. Thus, when our species Homo sapiens came to exist, we came to exist without tails but we still had a tailbone fused to our spine, representing a remnant of what our ancestors once were. And this is only one example of our evolutionary past because another is the appendix, which is a part of the body that is millions of years old and may or may not have some use today. It's it's actually debated to a certain extent. And the appendix is basically a tube connected to the large intestine. And according to scientists, not all that important, but again, may have some type of function that can be beneficial to us. At the same time though, it can also get infected and require surgery for removal. So it's not a crucial part of our body. And we're even starting to see cases where there are people who are even born without an appendix in the first place. Thus again, showing it's not that necessary. Now looking beyond our species, many other animals also have vestigial parts. In fact, a common animal in the homes of human beings. Dogs, for instance, have what is called a dewclaw, which is a nail and toe just above their paw on the side of their legs. In fact, if you are a dog owner, you probably have noticed this before, since it's just this digit that doesn't seem to really do anything, given it is vestigial. But for our dog's ancestors, this used to be used to climb things like trees. But of course, today, dogs don't climb trees, so they're pretty much useless. And in addition to dogs, there are also other animals like snakes who have vestigial parts, because snakes have something called spurs attached to them near the under part of their tail, which are remnants of back legs. And the reason they have this is because millions of years ago, the ancestors of snakes were lizards that were capable of walking. So in turn, when it comes to thinking about vestigial parts, they are this incredible reminder of where we come from. This can be uncomfortable for people who, you know, have spent their whole lives believing in, you know, some type of religious text. And the idea of vestigial parts and human evolution may seem threatening, but at the same time, if someone is religious, by denying evolution in a way, you're really just denying the complexity of God if you believe in God. Which is why many scientists throughout history who were actually religious, felt that the best way to understand God, if someone is religious, is to understand God through the observable universe around them. 
and nature and using that as the evidence for what God's created. Therefore, whether we want to acknowledge it or not, evolution is part of our story and our vestigial parts represent the history of our existence. In turn, we either can pretend it doesn't exist, which would be just denying reality, or we can embrace the incredible millions of years of evolution which led to you and me. After all, again, whether one is religious or not, the fact that millions of years of evolution led to this moment of us being on this earth in a vast and mysterious universe is probably the closest thing to a miracle that we can get to. So as always, remember, billions of years led to you. 